All right, we got in a, a few emails um, on a similar topic, and it's perfect for you as a, as a Bucks fan. Um, this one came in from Matt Reitzenstein. Uh, Please compare future Hall of Famer Mike Evans' 10-year career so far amongst any and all 10-year spans amongst wide receivers. I'm not sure, but I reckon he ranks quite highly. Thank you, and Merry Christmas, an absurdly happy Bucks fan. Um, I forget where the other one came from, whether it was Twitter or an email. I couldn't find it again. But so on the one end of the spectrum, you've got future Hall of Famer Mike Evans, you know, look at all the records. And another guy sent in a question essentially saying, is Mike Evans wide receiver Frank Gore? So as a Bucks fan and a guy that has witnessed Mike Evans' career and this a- annual, you know, metronomic reminder that, oh, there's the, uh, there's the next consecutive 1,000-yard season for Mike Evans – what has Mike Evans been in the NFL? Where does his career stack up? Is he an all-time great? Or is he simply a product now of, you know, the, the kind of baseline of being a pretty good NFL wide receiver for 10 years? Uh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm firmly, I'm fir- this is shocking, I know. I'm firmly in the Mike <laughs> Evans is a Hall of Famer. Okay. I, I am firmly there because... Now is this? Hang on, just to stop you there. Is this? Yes. Is this once we've cleared a backlog, or like even relative to some of the people waiting now, he's a Hall of Famer? I don't think that he's going to be. A, I, I'm realistic to to know that he's not going to be a first ballot Hall of Fame, right? I think that him and Levante David are talented and have the longevity, have the success, have the have the stats, all those things. Both of those players, I think, are Hall of Fame caliber players. I don't know if. I mean, let's face it; they play in Tampa. You know, if these dudes played right. in a different market, a bigger market, it's it's probably a different story. And I think that goes into your argument of why, in a vacuum, these guys should be Hall of Famers. When you look at the numbers of what Mike Evans has been able to do, you know, we're not just talking about, like, total career yards or things like that, whatever. We're talking about, like, consistent, consecutive success. And the only players that have been able to do this in a similar conversation with Mike Evans are all Hall of Famers. It's Jerry Rice, it's Randy Moss, it's Terrell Owens, it's Larry Fitzgerald. Like those are the only dudes who are able to boast the total touchdown production, the consecutive 1,000 yards. And people go like, "Oh, consecutive thousand yards, like it's not that big of a deal." There were a couple of years when he barely eclipsed that. You got to understand the quarterbacks this dude has played with. Yeah, sure, he played with Tom Brady for a few of them. It's it's but it's Tom Brady, it's Baker Mayfield, it's Jameis Winston, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick, it's Josh McCown, it's Blaine Gabbert, it's it's it, it's uh, Mike Glennon. Like these are all the different quarterbacks that no matter what, he's also had so many different offensive coordinators, so many different head coaches. So it's not like the man only played with Tom Brady his entire career. Right, it's not like he only played, and I don't even mean this to be a shot at like Marvin Harrison or Reggie Wayne or whatever, but it's not like he only played with Peyton Manning. He played with so many different quarterbacks, so many different head coaches, so many different offensive coordinators, different offensive lines, different outlooks on the team, different supporting casts, whether the team was good or whether the team was bad. And you know what he did every single time? Produce, 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 produce. Doesn't matter. To me, that's a talent in and of itself. Okay, so we never led the league in receiving yards. Okay, so he doesn't get talked about uh, in like as as like being at ninety nine overall in Madden or whatever. Longevity and consistency, when you have this kind of context, is absolutely something that should go into the conversation. You look at it right there. What's the what's the lowest receiving grade that Mike Evans has? It's kind of small on my screen, so I can't even see it. But it's good. It's like seventy five. The, guy, the guy's worst year is still like a top 15 receiver. And you also, if if you listen to those NFL player sound bites that they sometimes do for the NFL top 100 where the players vote on it, so many of them talk about Mike Evans. Like, yeah, he's, 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 he's extremely tough to guard. You listen to defensive coordinators. Some of the first players that they will name or the first player that they're going to name when they're going up against it. Yeah, it's Mike Evans. He's, he's nailing. The way that he moves, the way that he plays at six foot five, 225 pounds, It's just different. And to me, all of that context says that this guy is one of the most talented players, the hardest working players, and a major reason why the Buccaneers were able to have success when they when they brought Tom Brady in, I think is because of Mike Evans. And I I just don't think that he gets enough credit for that and also for what he's been able to do from the down years as well. So, yes, I think he's a Hall of Famer. And I think that the the is he just Frank Gore kind of an argument <laughs> kind of I think that kind of stinks 
because it 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 downplays the work that he has put in to be this damn good every single season that he has played in the NFL. And look, staying healthy is yeah, it's luck. I get it, but like staying healthy for this many years, never missing a game, that is also an asset to your Hall of Fame case because you did that. You were in the rehab room. You're in the strength and conditioning room. Yeah, okay, you got a little lucky. Of course, that goes into it. But I don't know, man. People just throw that out the window like, ah, he just happened to play a long time. Okay, he's also a reason why he's playing a long time because he takes care of his body because he works really hard. I don't know. I, I get Obviously, I get very fired up about it, but <laughs> Mike Evans is a Hall of Famer. So yes. this year, the uh, the finalists, there's three wide receivers, I think, in the, the finalists for the Hall of Fame this year. Um, Andre Johnson. Uh, primarily from the Texans, Torrey Holt, primarily from the Rams, and Reggie Wayne from the Indianapolis Colts. It's an interesting trio because we've sort of just cleared the the backlog of like, I mean, Chris Carter was sitting there waiting for a giant period right. of time, and that right. dude finished like second in every statistical category when he retired to Jerry Rice, right? And we were waiting for him to get into the Hall of Fame. So I think the league has finally started to clear some of the backlog of wide receivers, and now we're getting to some guys that are actually in I think a vaguely comparable area to Mike Evans. I would say of that trio, Andre Johnson was definitely a better wide receiver than Mike Evans. I would say Torrey Holt was probably a better wide receiver than Mike Evans. And Reggie Wayne is the one where, you know, that's where you start weighing in, like how important was Peyton Manning for his entire career versus some of these other things. Uh, The other thing I find interesting is, you know, you were saying some of those years, Mike Evans sort of just scraped over a thousand yards. He never really led the league. This year is the first year of his career where he has a chance to lead the league in anything. He is currently leading the league in touchdowns with 13. He's one ahead of Tyreek Hill with obviously a week to to play, and nobody else is within three of them. So this could be the first year of his career, and probably will be, where he has a chance to lead the league in any receiving category, which I just think is interesting. I... I kind of agree with you. I don't think he's Frank Gore, wide receiver Frank Gore. But what if I told you he was wide receiver Curtis Martin? I mean, <laughs> he's 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 better than. Look, I I, I don't I Curtis don't know. Curtis Martin's in the Hall I, of Fame. I, I don't I don't know how I would answer that conversation. But like when you list off Andre Johnson, Torrey Holt, Reggie Wayne, is Mike Evans in the conversation with those dudes? Yes. Yes, he is. So if you're considering them for the Hall of Fame, you're considering Mike Evans for the Hall of Fame. Anybody who could just look at Mike Evans and what he's done and be like, nah, 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 he's not a Hall of Famer, is like, all right, you just you just haven't really been paying enough attention to Tampa football, which I understand. Small market team, I get it. I get it. I get it. Not everybody's going to pay attention to the Bucks. I think they've got like the worst winning percentage in the NFL all time. Like, I understand it. But I'm here to tell you that like he's in the conversation with all three of those wide receivers, in my opinion. Those... So. That's what makes him Hall of Fame worthy. Is he going to get in? I don't know. Because getting in, it's a little bit of a popularity contest. Like somebody told me, I don't remember if this was somebody like a a Hall of Fame voter, if this is just like their stance or whatever. But I've heard, can you tell the the story of the NFL without this player? Ridiculous argument, by the way. What? It's a ridiculous like concept. I I, I was going to say, that's a bullshit way to go about this. That's a, it's, it's a terrible way to go about this. So I hope that that's not an actual thing. Like, you could say. tell the story of the NFL literally without any single player or with all of them, every single one of them, just depends how detailed you want to be in your story. Like, I can tell <laughs> you the story of the NFL in a nutshell, in a paragraph that doesn't mention a single football player. It's, it's very easy to do. You don't need, like, that's just a terrible, it's a terrible reasoning of argument for to yeah. define a hall of famer if there's a guy sitting there in that room going man can i like somebody in that room has constructed this like personal story of the nfl that involves however many people are in the hall right now 50 something you know i don't know whatever it is 50 100 it's players a, it's a lot it's a lot more than that whatever but. In this guy's brain, right, there's some mythical story of the NFL that features 126 players or whatever it is and nobody else, and now they're trying to work out if this guy is the 127th that fits neatly into the narrative. It's just it's absurd as a conversation. It makes right. no sense whatsoever. I hate that as, a, as an argument. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, like Mike Evans is an interesting player to discuss, and I think you're right. Like One of the elements that doesn't get talked about enough for any of these guys is – 
what was their quarterback situation for most of their career. I mean, Andre Johnson is a great example of that, right? That guy did not have good quarterback play for a lot of his career. New Hopkins is going to be another one of those guys where, like, the list of people that he was getting it done with before Deshaun Watson showed up and played well is insane. Um, and yet you have other receivers who never played with a bad quarterback, right? Reggie Wayne basically had Peyton Manning for his entire career. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, that makes a huge difference. The question is, how much of a difference and how much should you factor that in when you're discussing, you know, the, the yard, like those, those numbers we talked about. If Mike Evans goes through his career and never leads the league in any single category, okay, we know that if he'd, if he'd played with, you know, Tom Brady for every year of his career, how much would that have helped? How many times would he have led the league in something if Tom Brady had been his quarterback every single season? There's no way of knowing, and yet that's the crux of the argument when you start getting into Hall of Fame debates. Yeah, and I just, you know, he's he's got 13 touchdowns, right? He's got 13 receiving touchdowns, mm -hmm. and he might lead the league in it, right? I mean, we're one week away. He right. might end up leading, the and, and that would be a, hey, look, Mike Evans led the league in a certain category in a single year. Two years ago, he had 14. So it's like, and the year before that, he had 13. So it, it's like, oh, okay. Well, just because the rest of the league maybe like didn't have one or two guys that were ahead of him, to me, that should not take away from what he did. So I don't know. Maybe him leading the league with 13 receiving touchdowns at age 30 starts to get people to be like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, like he's yeah, he's he he's he's still out here doing it. But when you look at all time receiving touchdown leaders. Mike Evans is tied for 12th with Devontae Adams, who is also the only other active player. And for him to get into the top 10, he needs six more, and that would get him to 100, over 100 for his career. So he would be in top, he would be top 10 all time in total receiving touchdowns. And I think Mike Evans is playing at least two more years in the league. If, as long as he doesn't get hurt, he's he's hitting that. So this is somebody who is going to be in a category with only other Hall of Famers when it comes to consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. And he's going to be top 10 in the NFL in total receiving touchdowns.